Okay, so I really, really stink at using um, writing tablets for these videos. I can't find one that works with me. I can't use a regular writing tablet because I have to be able to see what I'm writing. And having my writing appear on a screen while I'm writing on a tablet, it just doesn't work for me. So I'm not very good at technology. So my best option then is to do what I did here, which is to, to write everything out on a piece of paper beforehand and then just present it to you and discuss it with you. So what I'm doing here is dealing with the Bernoulli random variable. So a Bernoulli random variable is a variable that has only two possible outcomes. Generally, we think of them as success and failure. So in this case, success is, say, I don't know, like, does somebody have a specific disease? One would be success, yes, and zero would be failure, no. So, or a flip of a coin, if you're looking for heads or tails, you either want a heads or a tails. So that's a typical Bernoulli trial. There are only two possible outcomes. They're exhaustive, given that they're the only possible outcomes. So the probability of either of the two outcomes occurring, either a heads or a tail and a flip of a coin, is one. Because there's only two possible outcomes. Since they're mutually exclusive, it means they can't occur together. You can add up the probabilities and get probability of either of the two events occurring. And again, since there's only two, it's going to add up to one, because probabilities have to add up to one in, in, in the um, sample space. So this is the probability of the event X. So X can be one for success or zero for a failure. It's the P, which is the probability raised to the value of X, times one minus P. So one minus P would be the probability of a failure. So P is probability of success. One minus P is the probability of failure raised to the power of one minus X. So for this, the reason we do this is so if X is equal to one, then this would wash out here and you'd have P as the probability, right? Because P to the one, to the value one would be P. If P is one, then this would be zero. So this would wash out and become a value one. If we have failure, then x would be zero, so that would, p to zero is one, and we'd have one minus p would be the only thing left over. So this is a beautiful, beautifully done equation for the probability. Now, one thing we know is that in order for a, for, a, for this um, function to be what's called as a probability mass function, it must sum to the value one. So across every possible outcome, this should sum out, sum to the value one. Because everything has to sum up to one, as I mentioned. The probability of any and all, any either of all possible events occurring has to equal one. So if we write out this PMF, so this is basically a proof, right? That this is a valid PMF, probability mass function. We use PMF for what we call discrete variables, countable variables. Uh, we, use, uh, we use the term PDF, or probability density fun function, for any kind of continuous variable. So here we have only two possible values. X can equal zero, that yes, that is a zero. And I think X can be zero or one, so we're summing from zero to one using this, this um, function here. So when x is equal to 0, we have p to the 0 is equal to 1 times 1 minus p to the 1 minus x. So that's basically 1 minus p. And then when x is equal to 1, so that's what we're summing for the different values, possible values in that sample space. Sample space only includes success or failure. And when it's 1, p to the 1 is p and... 1 minus p to the 0, because 1 minus 1 is 0, is equal to 1. So we'll get basically 1 times 1 minus p plus p equals 1 minus p plus p. And that, this, there's a 1 over here. You have to trust me for that, because 1 minus p plus p is 1. So yes, this is a valid PMF. Woohoo! So that's, that's great. Now, in addition to knowing that this is a valid PMF, we want to know what the expected values are. So the expected value is basically the mean. So the expected value of x would be the mean. So let's, let's go ahead and calculate that. So an expected value 
is the value that we're looking for, x here, right? So this is that variable times its PMF in this case, so we're summing from zero to one. So we're, when x is equal to zero, this goes to zero, basically, right? And there's nothing here, you're just gonna have zero. So here's zero times p to the zero is one, times one minus p, it doesn't matter because it's still gonna be zero. And then when x is equal to one, it's gonna be one times p times one, which is equal to p, so zero plus p is p, so the probability value is the expected value, value for the, a Bernoulli random variable. What about its variance? So for the variance, we're taking the expected value of x minus the mean squared. If you think about it, that's what variance is. If you recall from whatever class you took, we calculate the variance as the variable minus the mean squared divided by you know, m minus one for, for using a sample to estimate the, the, the uh, population variance. But here, this is, we're just trying to calculate what the expected value is, right? So we know that the mu is p, right? Because it's right here. So it's x minus p squared. So the summation of x minus p squared, again, since it's an, it's an expected value, we're multiplying this times the probability mass function. And we get the summation of x minus p squared times, well, when x, we're gonna have p, that, well, this is the PMF here, right? p to the x times one minus p to the one minus x. Sorry for this messiness here. So when x is equal to zero, it's gonna just be p squared times one. Well, x is equal to zero here, it's one minus p. So p squared times one times one minus p plus when it's equal to one, we're gonna have, let's see, one minus p squared times p times one. So we get all this mess here. And it ends up being p squared times one minus p plus one minus p squared times p. So we get p squared. So if we, if we just, you know, go ahead and distribute here, we get p squared minus p cubed, right? p squared times one is p squared, p squared times p is p cubed plus we get it here, one minus p squared, we work that out, expand that, so we get this value here, or this, this, this mess right here, and we get p squared minus p cubed plus p minus two p squared plus p cubed, then we, if we just go ahead and, and simplify this, we get p minus p squared, and we extract the p, we get p times one minus p, and that is our variance here, so, to sum up here, we know that the expected value of a Bernoulli random variable is p, and its variance is one minus p squared. One, one, p, excuse me, it's p times one minus p. So that's a symbol for variance, sigma squared. And if we want a standard deviation, we just take the square root of that value. That, my friends, is how we prove the Bernoulli random variable and its distribution, it's, P, it's PMF, and find its expected values. That's it. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.